Anyway, after our next topic, after two weeks of speaking through his attorney, John Waters went on a media tour this week. The fired OSU band director sat for several interviews in which he said OSU rushed to judgment and he was trying to end the band's offensive traditions. The culture in our band is entrenched. And, and because it's entrenched, it doesn't turn on a dime. And so on my first day, I did indeed engage with our leadership and our leadership team in trying to shape that culture and trying to eliminate uh, uh, poor behaviors. We, uh, we have instituted a wonderful program of leadership training for our student leaders, as well as sex education, uh, sex, sex um, uh, abuse training and alcohol abuse training. All of these trainings that we have uh, instituted in our band have made it truly a better place since I've been the director. Lord Bischoff, did he help his case with these interviews this week, John Waters? You know, I don't think so. I think that it's, it's starting to sound a little repetitive. Um, you know, he's, he's saying he, they're trying to rally support. They're criticizing the report as, as faulty, insufficient, and, and pointing to it being an unfair uh, dismissal that he didn't get due process. I don't see him getting his job back. I mean, I, I just don't think it's, I, I think that's out of the question. The question at this point is, is he staging uh, a case so that the university will write him a big check? And if the check is, and he'll stop talking about this and go away, um, and if the check isn't big enough, um, I think John Waters will sue. Um, so I, you know, I, I think that um, a lot of this is sort of positioning his case for a settlement. I think attorneys who know the law in this area say that the legal case, if it comes to that, may come down to the question of what OSU was required to do under the law. Now, OSU says that under Title IX, they were required to act within uh, 60, days. 60, days. 60 days of receiving the complaint. Yeah. Waters says that same law requires uh, him to have gotten due process, which he says that he was denied. My own guess is that as the football season starts, and the games are played and the band's out in the field, the public is going to start to wane in their interest uh, of this. But if Waters does go to court, I think the result may well be another self-inflicted black eye on the part of Ohio State. But this, his interviews seem to increase or, or heighten OSU's resolve. They, they issued statements that were a little more forceful in their language. They, had a, they released a timeline. They... They were little, they're still just statements. Well, I, I thought it was interesting that they released an audio recording, supposedly, of, of John Waters yelling at a band member. Um, that told me, obviously, these, these um, morning national shows is, is concerning them. Because yeah. I, I didn't think that was um, a great move on OSU's part to release something like that. Because I think it does let on that this is bothering them more than, than they would probably like everybody to know. Um, it, Waters has a tricky defense, Daryl. He, he's basically not arguing the facts of what was going on with the band. He's saying, I was trying, and they didn't give me enough time. The Title IX, the language, can be pretty clear that if this stuff's going on, you've got to stop it. Right, and, and considering he, he's not just been director for two years, he was a, an assistant for several years before that, a member before that, you know, says he was the, the victim, if you will, of some of these practices. Um, if you feel so strongly, you know, why can't you change it? I, mean, I went to Ohio State. I know full well about their traditions and, and love many of them and, and hate some of them. But uh, there's, you know, he changed the, the band tradition very fast, what was happening on the field. Um, I think at least attempting to change the culture, you know, I think he has a hard argument that, you know, I didn't just have enough time, unless there's more that we don't know about. Many of the, the big changes came after he learned of the investigation, the, the, the ending of the midnight march in the, in the underwear or the pajamas or whatever it is, and, and then the, the nicknames ended, but only after he was informed of the complaint. I, I think this has all been kind of bad timing, because if, it, if this was occurring in January, I think it would give, like Dale was saying, you know, as the season progresses, you know, maybe people will wane in interest, but... I'm afraid because we're just beginning with football season, you know, the first time the band comes out for that first home game, there's going to be, you know, stories about it. And, um, you know, who knows if he's going to go away quietly. I mean, that is the big question. Because I think he's got a lot of alumni, alumni members and current band members who are out there ready to defend him and will do it at a moment's notice. I'll say one last thing. It's one thing to complain about the sexual harassment stuff that, allegedly was going on, but for them, for Ohio State to leak an audio tape of him yelling at a band member, 
are they trying to suggest that the coaches that coach these football teams <laughs> say, oh, gosh darn it, boys, you you just missed that block that time. Let's try to do better, please. Just Give like me a break. Woody did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the argument is that he, he was asked about this in, a, in, the, in the investigation, and he said it never happened, and then I think OSU was trying to prove that he was not honest in his questioning. Whatever. We'll work it out, and the story will go on, I'm sure.